and I'll be your host for the next half an hour. As many of you already know, the Right Honorable George C. Price, Prime Minister of Belize, was in Los Angeles recently. Our camera crew followed Mr. Price and his delegation for four days on a whirlwind tour of interviews, banquets, and other community events. We're very lucky to have Mr. Ernesto Castillo, the Los Angeles uh, Council for Belize, the Honorary Council for Belize, in the studio with us today. Mr. Castillo was instrumental in arranging the delegation's agenda while they were in Los Angeles. He's here today with us to help give you an overview of the Prime Minister's visit and maybe a little inside information. Thank you very much for being with us, Mr. Castillo. How are you today? I'm just fine, Veronica. Thank you for inviting me. Great. I imagine that uh, after the past, uh, let's see, the past weekend, you're pretty tired. I, I suspect that a lot of work went into that. How much time did they give you to prepare for that? Basically, I had one month from the time they decided on the date that they were going to come to Los Angeles. Unbelievable. You did all that work in one month? Um, was it you or did you have other people helping you? Well, we did put a team together, you know, a team that's known as the Belizean Association of the People's United Party. The People's United Party is the party that's now in government. Mm -hmm. So we were fortunate enough to have about 18 individuals who work with me very hard and very diligently to put this itinerary together. 18 people? Approximately. Wow, that's a lot of people. So that's great. You had some help because I see that there was a lot of work. Let's see, on the first day that they were here, I believe that um, the delegation did an interview at uh, the Belize Caribbean Pulse. Can you give me a little information about that? Yes, that program started at 9.30 p.m., 9.30 a.m. in the morning, yeah. and it was KPFK 90.7 FM. It's a Belizean program that's on every Friday morning. Right. And it went on for two hours up until 11.30 a.m. Right. Um, was there... Uh, was there any information that was uh, in the program that, um, I, I, I don't want to say came as a surprise, but I know that uh, Mr., uh, Mr. Price was due to uh, speak at the uh, Key Fest. Was that supposed to be a surprise? No, it was pre-planned and mm -hmm. the delegation, including Mr. Price, which headed that delegation, knew of the um, Key Fest event. Oh. So that was supposed to, we were supposed to end this visit with, with uh, if I could use this term, with a bang or, with, you know, with, in a tremendous fashion. Right. I believe we have some footage for the, uh, from the uh, radio station. Uh, can we see that? We're listening to the Belize Caribbean Pulse on KPFK. Okay, that's Los Nuri Angeles. Mohammed. Are you? Can you see the monitor? The right yeah. That's Nuri Mohammed, and I know that he spoke with, with uh, Mrs. Uh, uh, Flores and Vildo Marin and uh, so Mr. Price. Now, I know Mrs. Flores speaks several languages. Was she able to speak a different language on uh, the show that day? Yes, she spoke um, in English, of course. All Belizeans speak English, uh -huh. the primary language. 
She also spoke in Garifuna, which, which is another language by a group of people that came from, from Africa um, approximately 100 years ago. Wow. And now, Vildo, Mr. Marin, uh, I know he speaks a couple of languages as well. Uh, in addition to English, was he allowed to, uh, to speak? What other languages does he speak, first of all? He also speaks Spanish. As, as you know, in Belize, we speak three major languages. You know, with English is the primary language and Spanish is our secondary language, and then Garifuna is a third language which is spoken predominantly by the group of people that, that are called um, Garifunas. No, but that language is also becoming more, a little bit more widespread oh, throughout really? Belize, where all Belizeans are beginning to pick up on the language and the culture and Looks the like music, I'm you know, you know about the Punta Rock, the which Punta came Rock. Out from the Garifuna um, people. Really? Looks like I'm going to have to learn to uh, speak a little Garifuna and do a little Punta. <laughs> um, now, after they left the uh, radio station, I know that uh, the next place they went, they went to see um, Mayor Bradley in City Hall. And as I recall, George Price, the Honorable Prime Minister, was awarded the key to the city. Can you give me an idea of what happened with that? Yes, um, in fact, just interject a little bit. Just before we went to City Hall, we uh, visited a high school, which is Manuel Arts High School. Mm -hmm. 700 Belizeans attended, so they did a tr address that those group of Belizean students. Then we went to City Hall, where the mayor himself gave the key to the city, to our Prime Minister. Wow. And welcome, officially welcome the delegation. And um, that was a, quite a, a memorable event for all of us. How many people, how many Belizeans were there? How many people filled that hall? Well, basically, the hall could not hold more than maybe 70 or 80 people. So we were filled to capacity, and there were still people outside. People spilled out into the foyer and right. out into the halls. That's correct. Um, and now, does has uh, Mr. Price visited with the mayor in the past? He visited with the mayor a long time ago, back in um, 1983, when they oh. passed through, very briefly, mm -hmm. they passed through Los Angeles. So this wasn't the first trip? It wasn't the very first trip, no. Oh. But Okay, um, so when he was here before, he, he wasn't awarded the key to the city. It wasn't an official trip. It was basically a, um, a campaign trip, you know, just passing through. Uh -huh. and, and he basically just stayed about 24 hours. Oh, and really? So it was an official trip. But this trip was quite an official one, you know, like you said, four days and... And all business. Four nights, all business. All business. Um, did anybody get a chance to see Hollywood? <laughs> <laughs> well, they did ask about Hollywood. They saw Hollywood Hills. We really didn't go into Hollywood. Right, as, um, right. Was, because there was so much, there was so much to do. So much to do. Um, and now after that, I remember that uh, we visited several Belizean businesses. Mm -hmm. As I recall, uh, there was a print shop, there was, um, um, let's see, uh, several uh, um, hair quaff hairstylist yeah. <laughs> and uh, there was also a restaurant as well. Yeah, uh, are they all owned by Belizeans? They're all owned by Belizean. They're all successful businesses. There's also a very major business place that we visited that was, uh, it's called JNS uh -huh. and it's a machine um, operation where they manufacture small precision machine for aerospace and it's a multi-million dollar operation owned by Belizean and, uh, by the name of Joe Brown if I may mention Joe it. Joe Brown? Name, I met Joe Brown. Joe Brown was quite a nice Gentleman. Very nice gentleman. How long has he been in business, do you know? Uh, I think he's been in business maybe 20 years or so, but he has owned his own company. Uh, as a matter of fact, that's the place right there at the money. He also had a big reception for the Prime Minister. That was quite a spread, as I recall. You can see the magnitude of his operation looking at those big um, equipment, CNC equipment, which is, as you know, as computerized precision equipment. Yeah. I, you know, one thing I really liked, I liked the fact that he allowed his employees to join the delegation. I know mm -hmm. some businesses would not allow, uh, would not even set up for the employees, but I thought it was a very nice touch when uh, Mr. Brown allowed the uh, employees to come and uh, partake in a little bit of the feast. Um, how many businesses did you visit that day and how many did you miss? Because I know that there are several businesses owned by Belizeans in Los Angeles and I'm just wondering if you got to all of them or did you miss some of them or we missed several of them uh, there's countless business places here in Belize very successful business places also we went to six different business places and um, in 19 
1989 when they came to that's Joanna sisters over there so when oh, they came in 1989 that. we visited a lot of places also you know that was a campaign swing they were he was not the prime minister then oh really but now that he's a prime minister we we could only choose you know the, uh, a few places based on the time constraint what uh, what's an idea of some of the businesses maybe that you missed are there like um, are there like dressmakers and uh, I've been looking for a Belizean dressmaker for a long time fortunately I found one uh, this is this beautiful dashiki is by Lily uh -huh. and I'm wondering are there other uh, excuse me Belizean dressmakers around and Belizean businesses I've been so far unsuccessful in finding a lot of Belizean businesses well there there are many and, and as, as a matter of fact the premier dressmaker as far as I see is a young lady by the name of Mrs. Anita Rabatou. too oh she really sews very great. She saw the uh, entire wedding parties for as many people. She saw these type of outfits. And, no um, kidding. No kidding. I know when I there's, there's several other ones. When I spoke with Lily, she was in the in the process of uh, making a, a, a wedding dress as well. Speaking of dresses, the um, the night at the uh, Park Plaza Hotel was a very, I would say, successful evening. I saw many, many beautiful women in many, many beautiful dresses. What uh, what was the uh, idea behind the banquet? Was that just uh, to allow the Belizeans to uh, the Belizean people to uh, uh, get dressed up and come and, and and be formal with the prime minister? It, the idea was to add a festive mood in an atmosphere whereby the delegation can meet Belizeans, all, like you said, all dressed up and formal, and also where we could present our culture in the area of entertainment. We had Garifuna dancers, and we mm -hmm. had a, our premier dancer, like these are, this is um, Splenda Arnold, which is a premier dancer in the Belizean community. She's also into theater and She's singing. She's beautiful. And, yes. Absolutely gorgeous. Uh, and you had other dancers that night as well. You had the, uh, I don't think I'll say this right, the uh, Soka Riba? The, well, no, the, um, Glenn Arnold has a group called Soka Riba. Oh, I see, But okay. she did a solo that night. The other dancer that we had were Garifuna dancers. Oh, that's right, that's The Garifuna that's right. that we had talked about earlier, very rich cultural uh, uh, Garifuna Belizean. With the drums and uh, um, the um, the ball, that was that was fantastic. That was very 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 well received that night. Um, and how late did that last? It lasted until 2 a.m. 2 a.m. And, and who uh, who was the uh, um, entertainment that night? The entertainment that night uh, we had um, cross culture connection. Of our number one band in a sense, and they're all Belizeans. We also had. A young man by the name of um, DJ Erling. He's also a prime DJ. Oh, really? Of... Is DJ Erling the same as Roy Pele Ellis? Because no. I know Roy Pele Ellis. Pele Ellis, C is um, an MC master of ceremonies. Okay. He was one of the key fest, and he also came on to say a few words. Right, right. I think he's. I think Roy Pele Ellis is great. <laughs> um, and so that lasted until 2 a.m. Mm -hmm. Now, were you there until 2 a.m.? Yes. How on earth did you get up the next morning? <laughs> Lots of coffee. Oh well, yeah, it wasn't easy, but you know, there's a job to do. You got to do it, so you got to. It's a dirty rise. job, but That's somebody's got to do it, right? Somebody has to do it. <laughs> That's so funny. It's also a fun job, you know. Even even though it was a lot of work, you want to say that it, it was a fun job. It was a fun job. Are you still are you still counting receipts and doing things from that, having meetings from the from that weekend? Are yeah. you still in the we're process still, of wrapping up the loose ends? We're still balancing our um, accounts, you know, for different functions, uh -huh. and we're still collecting receipts, like you mentioned, from different people. And so all. even after the delegation left, the even work the goes on. The work goes on. We've we've paid all our expenses, which we're fortunate to mm -hmm. be able to do, mm -hmm. but we're still collecting to balance our books. Wow, that still sounds like a, a lot of hard work. Okay, now we were, let's see, Saturday night we were at the Park Plaza, and then Sunday morning, uh, there was a lovely church service at St. Anthony's in Long Beach. That's right. And there at the church service, there was uh, a Monsignor. Yes. And a bishop. And a bishop. And a car Excuse me, and a cardinal. Um, no, there wasn't a cardinal, but there was a, another priest. The bishop is in line to be a cardinal. Oh, really? Yes, and this is a bishop from Nigeria who was happened to be visiting that weekend and when he heard about the prime minister being here. He uh, came up and um, talked to Monsignor Calderon, and wow. um, they all 
put so, sources together and had the service with the Prime Minister that morning. Did the Bishop and the Prime Minister know each other prior to no, Sunday? No, but the Monsignor and the Prime Minister knew each other. As a matter of fact, the Monsignor flew to Belize when, when Mr. Price became the Prime Minister in 1989. He flew there for the inauguration. Oh, really? Yes. That's, fan that's great. That's absolutely fantastic. And then after the um, church service, we went to a lovely little restaurant. Um, the name of it was... Um, the gosh, mustard seed. The mustard seed, that's right. And uh, I believe that uh, the gentleman who owned the, the mustard seed also, uh, let's see, he was in the church service and I believe he's been to Belize as well. Can you tell me a little bit about Dr. Lou? Yeah, he's Dr. Barry Lou. He, uh, he's a foreign investor mm -hmm. in Belize and he owns the Belizean Hotel, a very exclusive hotel out in Hamburgers Key, a place been featured in the program um, the Runaway with the Rich and the Famous, that's the hotel they use. Oh, really? There's also a lot of um, people who would go down there to film movies. Really? For example, um, that's the Prime Minister at the Mustard Seed. That's a great shot. The, uh, the, uh, father of Belize the Father of Belize and the Father um, of the United States, they're together. That's a, that was a fantastic shot with George Washington and George Price. Mm -hmm. Um, and that is the Monsignor, I believe, pouring the orange the, juice. The Mons, no, that's, he is, um, this is a priest oh, out see. from St. Louis. Uh -huh. This is the bishop with, with his back towards us who um, came from Nigeria. The Monsignor was unable to make it to this function uh -huh. on that Sunday morning, which is a brunch. You know, given to um, the prime minister and the delegation by um, Dr. Barry Lou. Was this prearranged or? Um... It was prearranged between Dr. Lou and myself, and, and also approved by our committee, of course. I see. I see. That was, as I recall, a very, very nice place, and uh, it seemed that the uh, uh, the host and the hostess they were very hospitable. I really enjoyed being there, uh, as I did traveling a around with the delegation for. Uh, um, gosh, four days. All right, I'm, I'm glad you used the word hospitable because Dr. Lou is the owner of a hospital which is right beside that restaurant. And so he's been to Belize also. He owns the hospital and so he's in the medical field. And oh, again, I didn't a, know that. an investor in Belize. Yeah. I, he owns a hospital. He owns a hospital. Wow, I, that's, I think that's the first I've ever heard about that. Mm -hmm. um, okay, and then now after that, Let's see, we left the mustard seed, and I believe that there was a little time for rest and relaxation. Is mm -hmm. that correct? Yeah, there was some time for rest and relaxation, mm -hmm. but the Prime Minister, on the way back to the hotel where uh, he stayed, we visited um, Loyola Marymount University. Oh, wow. He wanted to see that university as someone who attended that. Collegian friends. Yes. Wow, that's and great. So we drove around the campus, and you know, then we went back to the hotel so they can relax, relax for the next event that occurred following that evening at the hotel. And what? And that was another kind of dinner, but it wasn't as formal. It was more of a business dinner. Yes. And, it, and Go ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah, it was a business dinner whereby um, the government is um, generating some interest in foreign investment for Belize. Uh, and is, was, that the, um, was that the idea of the business, to the, the dinner, um, to generate uh, um, foreign investment in Belize? Well, yes. Uh, in Belize, we have a lot of um, investors already mm -hmm. who live out here. There's a lot of other people who are interested in uh, knowing more about Belize mm -hmm. and becoming investors in Belize. Mm -hmm. And so, and they also wanted to meet the Prime Minister. You know, many people oh, come sure. to the office asking, can we meet the Prime Minister sure. of the Minister of Economic Development? And so, this gave us all the opportunity right. to bring the investors, Belizean investors and foreign investors. That's the Monsignor there, Monsignor Calderon, oh. that we talked about earlier. Uh -huh. He did attend it that business dinner and also um, gave the invocation that evening. Who hosted? Who was the host of that dinner? The host of that dinner was the consulate of Belize, which is my office. That's myself. your office. And I thought since that that, that would be uh, an official mm -hmm. uh, function in the area of generating investments and um, we encouraging Belizeans to become business partners with, with foreign investors, I thought that the consulate office would be the appropriate office to host that one. Of course. Um, were there also included in that dinner Belizean businessmen here in Los Angeles? Yes, as a matter of fact, about half the people there were Belizeans and the other half were foreign investors to Belize. Uh, the government has a campaign, a very strong campaign right now where we're encouraging Belizeans to become foreign investors or to become partners of foreign investors. As you know, um, 
to keep relying on borrowing, we have to generate income. Um, right. So we're inviting investors who would give us access to new markets, who would create jobs, who would um, contribute to the economic growth and development of our country. What do you think about the economic growth and development of the country? Do you think it's moving too fast or do you think it's just moving at the right pace? I think it's moving at the right pace. At this time, we're screening investors because we're interested in those that not only would like to share the wealth that would be generated from their investment, but those that would like to contribute into infrastructure, those that are interested in ecotourism. We have an ecotourism campaign. At this time, we're preserving our reef, our largest reef in oh. the Western Hemisphere. Tell me a little bit about the coral reef. Well, the coral reef is approximately 200 miles long, which is about the length of the coast of our country. We wow. have 200 of sea coast. Mm -hmm. We have approximately 400 um, keys or little islands that, that just glitter over the coast of the country. Uh -huh. it's, it's like having a wedding ring with diamonds on it. Yeah, it and, sounds beautiful. Uh, we have the largest living and healthy barrier reef in the world. Uh -huh. Australia is the largest in the world, but we have the largest healthy. Uh -huh. um, we have the second largest barrier reef in the world exclusively. And, and is, are there uh, measures being taken to uh, protect the reef? Most definitely. Like I said, our philosophy right now in tourism is ecotourism, which okay. is the awareness and preservation of our natural resources. We're not only um, expressing this to tourists and visitors, but also we're spreading this awareness to the Belizeans themselves. That way we can, we have to protect it first. That's right. If we would like visitors to protect it It also. begins at home. Yes. That's right. Okay, and then I think the absolute last thing that happened before uh, the delegation left, as you said, was the Big Bang, the Key Fest. And I, I want to congratulate not only you, Mr. Castillo, but I want to congratulate both uh, the Belize Cultural Association and mm -hmm. the Consortium for Belizean Development. I know they co-sponsored it this year. And uh, I think that it was uh, a fantastic turnout. Can you give me a little idea about the Key Fest and maybe how it began and how it evolved through today? Yes, uh, about five years ago, um, uh, the consortium, there was uh, about probably five or six of us, I was a director in the consortium at that mm -hmm. time, and uh, we all put together and decided, let's have a big festival functions on Memorial Day, and, and as you can see, traditionally we have about anywhere from six to eight thousand Belizeans. Wow. Over there, there's thousands of Belizeans. Wow. There. And um, the following year, um, the consortium members decided to give it to an organization that, that, that sponsors and promotes culture in Belize. Uh -huh. And so that's when Belize Cultural Association came on. And so this is their fourth year, but it started with the consortium. Really? And so this is the fourth year that they put off an event of this magnitude where they have um, about maybe seven or eight of the best Belizean bands. Um, different foods for arts and crafts and, and Mr. food, food galore. Mr. There. Price just moved through the crowd like uh, Just home free, he's just at home. He's really at home with his people. He, there's nothing for him to fear. He's quite an honest, such a just man, quite Belizean minded. He thinks about country, the people. He's not the wealth or greed or corruption or any of those things. So the people know that. He has nothing to fear and God is always on his side. I felt so comfortable when, it was, uh, when I was speaking with him. I spoke to him on several occasions and uh, he made me feel very comfortable when I was talking to him. We had, uh, like I said, a couple of conversations and uh, I even told Joe and he laughed. <laughs> <laughs> so I was I was really really pleased that uh -huh. uh, he was he was such a comfortable person to be around. Um, I also wanted to find out uh, when they left. Well, who arranged first of all? Who arranged all of the uh, the flight instructions? And uh, I, I noticed that Mr. Price was not traveling with any Secret Service. No, but um, throughout the duration of the trip, he did have an entourage to travel with him. Mm -hmm. Um, which of course is our committee. Right. You know, all of our committee usually traveled with him, or, or as many as possible. Mm -hmm. Then he had his um, entourage mm -hmm. again, which was the delegation, right. and he had two personal um, aides, one you know that traveled with him a lot oh, of times really? also. Um, Gee, they were so friendly. I missed them too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. But as far as uh, answer your question, who made the travel arrangements? They made the travel arrangements as far as flying from Belize to here and from Belize to back. Back, I mean, from here back to Belize. But once they arrive at the airport, until the time they're ready to board the plane back, 
that's when my office and our committee, which is um, the Belizean Association of the People's United Party, made all the arrangements for the entire trip. Unbelievable, unbelievable. Mr. Castillo, can you give me maybe a one minute overview of your office and how it facilitates not only Belizean people here in Los Angeles, but American people who want to go to see Belizeans? Of course. Um, the office is located at 611 South Wilton Place, which is between Wilshire and 6th Street in the Wilshire District. Um, we're a branch and an office of the government of Belize, the, the Office of Foreign Affairs. Um, myself, I'm the Honorary Council. We have a staff out there. And um, we're open daily to assist all people who is interested in Belizean affairs. We promote the country. We promote tourism. We have a wealth of information on investments. Um, we invite potential investors to pass through the office to get information, and we point them in the right direction. We make appointments for them to see different offices and agencies in Belize. And then for Belizeans, we, we're able to renew passports for Belizeans. We provide emergency travel documents. Wow. We provide wow. them with listings with, for jobs in many cases. Um, uh, on, on that note, we're going to have to end it. I would like to thank Mr. Castillo and the Office of the Honorary Council of Belize here in Los Los Angeles for joining us today here um, at, in Belize, at Belize Currents. I would also like to thank Mr. Castillo and his office for allowing our camera crew to travel around with them for four days. It was uh, once again a whirlwind. Um, I also want to leave you with the note too that uh, when you're out and you're shopping around, think of your Belizean merchants. They're there. Sometimes you just have to look for them. They're there and they provide the same services that any other merchant could. So, so support your local Belizean merchants. They love to see you. Also, support your local Belizean charity. They need you. Once again, one world, one love. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you for coming, Mr. Castillo.